working on an EOL TV, but we have the last few days we have very strong sea breezes in the afternoon. So I won't have good effects. So I, I need a quieter day. So it's normally a January 1, January 2 job. So I'm just mucking around here with a few things and uh, I've got one of these meters here. Not sure I'll put it in, but um, this is a CT meter. A current transformer meter rated for 3 times 800 ampere, 3 times 240 volts. Which comes in a uh, casing rack panel mount meter, and it's really cool. There's the terminals, uh, rear terminals. Um, I've worked out that's active red, yellow, blue phase, neutral, current one, current two, current three. There's a little breathing device here. This is uh, ACT or current transformer, which is. Uh, converts the main current from the supply to 5 ampere. This is actually not for this meter, this is a 1000 ampere one, I think. I haven't got 800 uh, ampere CT, mm -hmm. but this particular meter is designed to work with uh, 800 ampere, or at least true for 800 ampere CTs. I'm just making up some connecting leads and I'm going to apply that to the meter, I want to give it a run. But I'll, I'll run it as a direct reading meter. So I'll put straight 5 ampere through the device and uh, see how it performs. As I said before, this is a panel mount meter, so we're going to take it out of the casing. Loosen the screws already carefully on the, these little tabs here. This can pull the meter out of the casing while it's live. It's really cleverly designed actually. And here we've got the sliding contacts. As with CT, so current transformers, you need to apply bridging links, but that's already been dealt with in here. Soon the meter is slide slid out. There's a pair little contact here. And are the CT shorting links. So as soon the meter comes clear of the tray or the rails, uh, they will short out the CT. So the power from the CT, so the current, comes in, goes through the link and goes back. So that means the CT is not let open circuited. So the generic meter is uh, very robustly built. We've got the coils here. This, the top one is the voltage coil and the, the bottom one is the current coil. Red face. Yellow phase, voltage and current. There we go, blue phase here, voltage and current. And as you can see, we'll have a look here. Easiest is to see on the yellow phase once you see the two black wires go to this, so that's yellow phase. These two are the red phase, and these are the blue phase. And here you can see the current, red, or the Potential red, yellow, blue, and neutral. I'm going to connect the device up to a power source and we'll make it spin. Puffle here, that's eyelashes. She's under there. Showing a lot of interest always. Ali! Meter's back in the casing and I'm going to connect the wires. Guess get us to go rolly bollies. Rolly bollies. So I've wired the meter up at single phase, it's a three phase meter, but I did single phase uh, 15 ampere. The potentials, neutral, current element 1, current element 2, current element 3, and I'm going to put these wires in parallel. So I'll bundle the three brown ones together, and the three black ones together, and then we have a 15 ampere meter, 1.5 ampere. I've got this whole lot connected up to standard uh, PDL60 power socket, so yeah. Energize it shortly and see how the meter is going to perform. Got the energize, energize device and the meter is spinning. It's got a heater on there, 9 ampere load, so the meter is a 15 ampere rated meter. At this stage, the disc is happy. So if you look at the uh, nameplate here, 
reverse per kilowatt, 1.875. This meter reads kilowatts, lowest number is 10. So per one kilowatt hour, that is 1.875. So that means to move 10 on this meter is 18.75 revolutions. That's the number to do, uh, jump over to uh, go from the 5 to the 6. So this meter shows 5,344,950 kilowatt hours, at the moment. nearly 960. Uh, percolate for a while. Important if you test metal clad meters, just always put an earth on the casing as well because it is metal. In any case, there's an insulation failure, at least you'll trip the circuit back or uh, RCD or something. So, yeah, that is uh, close for a while. Um, this is probably the last video for the year because the wind is still hasn't improved or reduced. As you see, the trees in our garden they are going quite wild. So the TV will be waiting for January 1 or January 2nd. So by this I wish everybody a happy new year 2022, hopefully COVID free, because I'm sick and tired of all COVID dramas. You know, you've got the new Omicron, uh, the variety thingy happening now, so hopefully that uh, they get sorted. Seem to be a quick fizzle more or less. We gone level 2 orange in New Zealand last night, so it means no limitations on people gathering, which is nice. Otherwise, especially in swimming pools, there's limits on people in spas and saunas, etc. So. Yep, so uh, year's ending to an end, and uh, let's hope next year is going to be a bit better. Everybody take care. I may get the flip over on the clock tonight, see, see in what status I'm surviving tonight. Cheers. Not sure if this meter got a jumping digit, but I'll let it roll over from 499 to 500. Some of these meters are constant mesh and some are synchro mesh. It means they flip over on uh, the full units, so you don't have numbers halfway between. Looks like a constant mesh, this thing, but it's good. I like all over some numbers. Actually, this is the flip over device because it shows a 9, and now the next 9 comes up, and you will see there is an indentation and a 9 becomes a 0 and you will see it go flip to 500 and it rolls over on the click so it's a jumping dial meter so 499 that's a typical GEC design this there we go 500 so click so you don't in general don't have numbers halfway between especially for the hundreds and thousands etc Happy New Year. One January 2022.